whole of the brain stem. It consists of diffusely appearing the system of neurons. And we have studied in the sensory system that whatever sends via the sending tracks, it gives off branches into the retinal formation and then goes by the thalamus to the cortex. Uh, some other functions related to the formation are that it has very important role in arousal. Okay, arousal of the brain, arousal of the person, you keep the person wide awake. Here it has an important role in our sleep wake cycle. When we fall asleep, when we uh, drowsy, we fall asleep for how many hours, then when do we wake up or we feel wide awake and our consciousness. All of this has to do with the retinal formation. Third point is that the retinal formation is a very important role in pain motivation. You can remember this point by connecting these two. The person in pain has trouble falling asleep. Once you relieve his or her pain, pain you know, that person can fall asleep peacefully. So, you know, there is an important role of reticular formation and pain modification. Last but not the least, the reticular formation sends out signals to the periphery motor muscles to get to control their tone. So, the last function of the reticular formation is to regulate the muscular tone. Okay, moving on towards sleep. What exactly is sleep? Okay, so sleep is basically a state in which person is unconscious but he or she can be aroused from it by giving a sensory stimulus okay any sensory stimulus if a sensory stimulus is given to an unconscious person and he or she ends up waking up then we say that the person was asleep this is the differentiating point between sleep and coma okay when a person is in coma it's also a state of unconsciousness but a person can not be aroused from it. Another important uh, uh, thing regarding sleep that you need to remember is that it's an active process. Our body functions, they're still occurring in there. Some active things are occurring in our body, hence it's an active process. Yeah, we move, change sides, we move our limbs. We are breathing, reason metabolic rate, despite being low, it's still there. Hence, it's an active process. Right, the next important topic is what are the types of sleep? So basically, there are two types of sleep. There is a slow wave sleep. Slow wave means the frequency is less. So it's a slow wave sleep, which is also known as the deep sleep. And then there is a rapid eye movement sleep. The most of our time that we spend sleeping basically constitutes of this type of sleep. The brain waves during this slow wave sleep, they're very strong. That means that they are high in amplitude but very low in frequency. Okay? So their number will be less, but their amplitude will be Look at our picture in it. Uh, okay. Then I told you that about 75%, 75% of the sleep during the night is the slow wave sleep. And it basically comes to the so first hour of the slow wave sleep, also known as the deep sleep, is your restful type of sleep. Okay. What happens to the vegetative functions of your body? They decrease. All of them decrease. So the heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory, is a metabolic rate. All of them fall. You do, you may be uh, having dreams, but you do not end up remembering those dreams that you witnessed during slow wave times. Then we come towards the second uh, form of second phase of sleep that is known as rapid eye movement sleep. When well, rapid eye movement sleep. Okay, as the name denotes, during this type of sleep, your eye undergo rapid movement. These uh, rapid eye movement sleep basically comes in episodes. Okay, it's an epi episode which comes in between these slow wave sleeps. This episode comes in or steps in after every 90 minutes, that is one and a half hour. So you basically have one and a half hour of slow wave sleep. And then after that, you end up having rapid eye movement sleep. That lasts for five to 30 minutes. Then you go back to your slow wave sleep. Then after 19 minutes, you come back to the rapid eye. So rapid eye movement sleep is not some restful sort of sleep. Is uh, It includes the vivid dreaming part. The dreams that you end up actually remembering is part of your rapid eye movement sleep. It is also accompanied by active muscle movements. But one important thing that we do need to remember is that during REM, your spinal cord actually sends out vivid signals to your peripheral muscles and inhibits them. But despite that inhibition, despite muscular inhibition, uh, there is can be active movement of us. Uh, what happens to your respiratory rate, to your vegetative functions? They become irregular. Your uh, heart rate, respiration, irregular. 
Masa itu pun depressed dan dia boleh discuss Or uh, one important thing again that you need to remember is that It's hard to arouse a person from their behind It's difficult to wake the person up But the person can, you know, voluntarily uh, end up waking up him or herself But if another person tries to wake that person up, that is difficult During temperature eye movement, the brain activity that is very high Okay, yeah, this point will be memorized when we look at the brain waves going on during the grad movement. Uh, so far, you just need to remember that during them, the brain activity is very high, so is the brain metabolism. Despite the person, hence we say that the sleep is actually an active process. These are EEG waves. How do we get this picture? This graph is by placing electrodes on top of your head. And those electrodes basically capture the brain activity or the potentials going on within the brain. Okay. These are the brain phase from where a person is fully awake. So there's a lot of activity going on. Uh, the frequency is high. It's the amplitude, somewhere in between. The frequency is high. Then when the person falls asleep, and this is basically your slow wave sleep, it has a couple of stages. All of these one, two, three, four stages are in that of slow wave sleep. Okay. When you fall asleep, you basically are in stage of one. And after you some time, the look at the change in the brain waves also. The amplitude gradually increases and the frequency gradually decreases. Okay, as you fall deep and deep into your slow wave sleep. The amplitude of the brain waves increase, sorry, they increase, the amplitude increase, the height of the graph increases, and the frequency it ends up decreasing. Okay? So you step by step get into stage four. Then <clears throat> this process goes back okay, in the verse. Stage four, stage three, stage two, roughly one and a half hour has passed, and you finally enter into your rapid avenue. Okay, now look at how the graph is in rapid eye movement. This is your rapid eye movement graph. Rapid eye movement graph is also known as beta waves. Okay. These are very synchronized type of brain activity. Okay. Uh, there's no specific pattern. So and has occurred after about 19 minutes when you fall asleep. After the rapid eye movement is over, it lasts for a period of 5 to 30 minutes. So you then progress back to stage one of sleep, then two, three. Four at last, and then you are sent back to stage four, three, two, and one. Then again, another 90 minutes of fast, and you end up having rapid eye movement in the afternoon. One important thing that you need to know is what exactly is going on here. Going to the stages three and four go here. Okay, as you sleep during the night, as you sleep more and more, stage three and four finally disappear. You know, when you have achieved a lot of sleep. And you're near to actually make it up. Stage three and four disappear. And look at what happens to your rapid eye movement speed. They return back more frequently and they return back for a greater period of time. Okay. So their frequency at the end, you know, when you're near to wake it up, as you achieve more and more sleep, the rapid eye movement, they return a more frequent and for greater period of time. With a 5 to 30 minutes carry RFA, now they will last for a longer period of time. So, yeah. so just keep these brain waves in your mind. Right? You fall into deep sleep, the amplitude increases, frequency increases, rapid eye movement, beta waves. Beta waves denotes rapid eye movement. Rapid eye movement sleep, due to characteristics, is also known as the paradoxical sleep. Okay. It's why because the brain waves in the REM was very close to that of when a person was awake. Because okay. they were unsynchronized. They had very high frequency, low amplitude. Which waves they're said to call are beta waves. So what happens in REM? We will discuss that the BP and the heart rate increased. They're irregular. Breathing is irregular. Uh, another important thing is that the males they uh, experience the autonomic reflex that is of benign erection during the rapid eye movement. Now, this has an importance of diagnosing impotence in men, uh, whether it's because of the vascular reasons or neurological reasons. Because if the penile erection is occurring in the rapid eye movement sleep, you can easily rule out neurological disorder. Again, then, most probably the cause of impotence is vascular disorder because penile erection is occurring during the rapid eye movement sleep. Muscular paralysis. During the rapid eye movement sleep, the voluntary muscles, then again, do not forget which muscles, which are voluntary muscles, which are temporarily paralyzed, signal output from the 
it's paracord. Section of the muscles which do not paralyze are your muscles of respiration. Almost you couldn't have survived without that. So muscles of the respiration pain in that. Second muscles are your extraocular muscles, which lead to that rubber eye of your feet. And third are your middle ear muscles, okay? which control and have a protective function for your inner ear. These, other than these three uh, types of muscles, the rest of the muscles, especially voluntary muscles, are all paralyzed. And let me just say this one. A bit about the duration of sleep, how much you sleep, you sleep in different age groups. The newborns, we all know that they sleep a lot. Their period of sleep is about approximately 16 hours per day, 50% out of which is rapid eye movement. On the other hand, as the age increases, the of adults, sleep decreases to about 7 to 8 hours, and only 25% of which is rapid eye movement, and the remaining 75 is your slowest. This is what I mentioned before. When we're looking at the graphs, the graphs, percentage of rapid eye movement it declines further when you age. So okay, the duration of rapid eye movement is here. It basically declines with increase in age, and eventually the stage three and four of slow wave sleep, those are also lost with increase in age. So we have discussed in fact, we looked at a couple of EGs. What are EGs? Is that Electroencephalograms, graphs which are formed by placing electrodes either on the brain, that would be invasive, but mostly it's a non invasive tool of uh, calculating the brain activity from the surface of your head. So you place electrodes on the head and you get to know uh, the potentials generated by different areas of the brain and you actually end up summating them all to get an end result. It has a very low diagnostic uh, significance in diagnosis of epilepsy and sleep disorders. Yeah, epilepsy may have a area of the children where exactly the disorder is coming from. So two things that EDD shows us is the frequency of the waves, which normally are the range between 1 to 30 hertz, okay? 1 to 30 cycles or uh, waves per second. Okay? That is your frequency, and you need the uh, wave amplitude. Roughly is about 2200 micro, which do not have any good. Typically, what are the brain wave factors? When a person, a person is conscious, stage of high waves, stage three in the EG that we saw, during consciousness, the brain waves exhibit high frequency, they're too many in number, but low in amplitude. Now, one may think why low in amplitude? A functioning brain, an active brain, should have high amplitude. The reason behind this is that many neurons of your brain are discharging synchronous, sorry, asynchronously. They're discharging at the same time, uh, hence they end up cancelling out each other. Okay? Many different neurons of many different areas of the brain all are firing at the same time, which which their potentials and end up cancelling out each other. Okay, hence, uh, the brain waves in case of conscious awake state is high in frequency but low in amplitude. On the other hand, if you look at the brain wave of EEG of a person who is deep sleep, his EEG are slow frequency, uh, low frequency, they're less in number, but their amplitude is high. Now, the EEG is said to be similar. Absolute of EEG waves remains there. So again, that's brain depth. Let me go to the last slide. Uh, regarding sleep, these are your, now uh, we need to look into them. We discuss this graph first. Graph denotes or is from a person who is fully awake and initially his eyes are closed. Okay. So, a person who's awake but with eyes closed, this is his waveform, the form of the brain. And these are known as alpha waves. Okay. Alpha, person awake but with eyes closed has alpha waves in his brain, which has frequency of about 8 to 20 hertz. Now, if the same person is asked to open his or her eyes, what happens? These alpha waves are converted into beta waves. Again, the person is still awake, now his eyes are open, and the alpha waves convert into beta waves. What change has happened is the frequency has increased. The frequency it has increased and the amplitude has decreased. Now the frequency is more than 30. It's 30 into 30 hertz. See, this is the same graph. Alpha waves with the person being awake, eyes closed. Beta waves, person awake, eyes open. Amplitude decreases, frequency increases. Right. Third type of brain waves are theta waves. Theta waves are formed in person who have some sort of a psychomotor disorder. 
this brain frequency waves is less than eight nanos, which should be the brain wave of seven. Again, this theta waves we should be in order by saying climate sense order by cyclical disorder. Last but not the least, are your delta waves. Delta waves occur when a person is deep in sleep. To get these, look at the synchronized wave pattern. It's a synchronized, very low frequency, about 0.5 to 4 hertz. Yeah, less than two or less than three hertz. Are your delta waves very high? I'm going to need synchronized wave. Each person is very deep asleep, or a person with coma has similar brain waves. Uh, do not forget where the rapid eye movement. Uh, person, okay? The person who is having currently rapid eye movement, who is making a set of brain, uh, brain waves, vanity, they are beta waves. Beta waves and rapid eye movement, person very similar to a person who is awake with eyes open. Despite sleep, rapid eye movement. These two graphs are uh, from a person who is having seizures. Okay? So normal brain activity is going on. In between, he or she experienced a seizure. Look at the spike. Okay, and it uh, increases extremely frequency. Okay, it's very narrow. This is a typical spike and boom pattern. Spike, boom, spike, boom. This has a clinical significance. It's a typical type of brain wave of one type of epilepsy known as petrol model. Okay, it's a significant characteristic of spike, boom pattern, or petrol model epilepsy, than we discussed in the chart.